What's up, everybody? You're here for another episode of the Sue Ham Show with your host, me, Salandia Hammond, a.k.a. Sue Ham Baby with SueHam.com. Now, we are back again with another electrifying show with another electrifying freaking guest. None other than <laughs> Mr. David Lucas. David, what's up, bro? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Welcome to the show. That's right. I know Thank you, you. you're in college and you're learning and you're doing all these great things, but I, I just had to take a minute and get you on the show. What I'd like for you to do, David, is just take maybe 60 seconds, maybe 120 seconds, two minutes, and tell people who you are and what you do, bro. Oh, well, um, I'm David Lucas, by the way. Um, I'm actually 19 years old, um, and I'm actually attending the best university um, in this side of heaven, which is called Clapham University um, here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Um, by fall, I am a minister, um, and I actually love motivating and encouraging hearts of young people. I'm an author, and also I've just been elected as the chaplain of 2017 here at Clapham University. Um, so that is a little about who I am. Um, and what I love to do um, and what I'm doing today. Awesome sauce. Now, you know, I always like to share the backstory of people, right? So you're <laughs> right. 19 years old. You pin two books. You got a third book coming out, but it wasn't always right. like that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always like that. Tell me, how does someone go from having a learning disability at a young age to writing two books and about to release their third book? Um, it, it's, it actually starts with the fact of just being self-motivated. I learned that we look for so many people to motivate us. Um, and that one of the things that I had to realize is that there's nobody fault but mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the only reason why um, I'm not successful. I'm the only reason why I'm not great. I'm the only reason um, why um, I'm not learning a uh, uh, capability that I know I could be able to learn too. And so I, I took that, what I was going through, and really understood um, why I'm there. Um, and what was the purpose for me to be in school? Um, and the, one of the things that mom always taught me, she said, Dave, you're in school to, here to learn. Um, so I had to really just take that and say, you know what? I may have learned disability. I may not be like everybody else. I may have to spend more time learning. I may have to spend more time reading. I must spend more time um, in tutoring sessions. Um, and that's just one of the things I had to uh, overcome. I didn't look for people to, to pat me on the back. I didn't look for people to be able to say, you know, um, you know, David, you need to get yourself together. It had it took me to be able to go out there and do that. So that's the reason why I overcome that um, that issue. Um, I didn't make it. I didn't make it to be a, to be a problem to me. Um, I just overcome that and just realized um, that I'm the only reason why I'm not successful. So. Oh boy, I got go yeah. freaking goosebumps right now. I'm telling you, can y'all see the goosebumps? Man, you're 19 years old and you really get it. You really get it that we really are the determining factor to whether we are successful or we're not. You have a you had a learning disability. The learning disability right. didn't have you. Right. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for that. So what made you feel that you were called to preach? You're a young dude. <laughs> you, you're, you're a young guy and you are called to preach. And here you are with the chaplain ministry here at Claflin. Tell me about that. It's, it's something that. I, you know, they say, you know, I'm being a preacher is not something that you call for, it's something that, that God chose you to be. Mm. Um, because if that's the case, everybody will be a preacher. Um, but not many. The Bible says there are few are chosen. Um, and for me to be able to be um, a chaplain here at Claflin University, um, it's, some, it's, it's a very um, sensitive thing because you got to think about there's so many, so many kids are here, so many di different religions, so many um, backgrounds, so many things are happening. Um, and it really just takes someone to have a neutral mindset um, and, and, and that, that loves everyone, loves every religion, that loves just love people, period. Um, and that's just something um, that God has predestined me to be at. Um, now, I remind you, um, this is even go from the, from even being Claflin University. Um, my first choice was Claflin University. Um, my first choice was Morehouse. Wow. Um, I got a full mm -hmm. ride to Morehouse University. But God whoa, has called whoa, me to. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Stop the press. Stop the You had yeah. a... Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that. Here's a man with a learning disability, but you have right. a full scholarship right. to Morehouse in Atlanta, right. Georgia. Right. The same institution that Dr. King. Right. I, okay, go ahead. Exactly. I'm going to drink my coffee on that. I got to plug uh, my girl's TV show, What's Up Now, Carolina. Go ahead. <laughs> but I did not. But I did not allow that um, to stop me before God's 
called me to be. And I prayed about that thing. I said, Lord, I said, I don't understand. I don't understand, you know, um, why would you have me here at Clapham University? And there's a fool right here, you know. Um, and because, you know, usually I'm sitting here like, well, you know, what, what is what do you have me here at Clapham University? Um, and I prayed about that thing. And the Lord told me, the Lord said, I have you in a place uh, um, that you cannot go into a, a light place and be light. Wow. You have to go into a dark place to be light. And I never understood that until now. I said, you know what, Lord, Clapham is not the best university that people think it is. Uh, but um, it's for me to do my job is to motivate and to encourage the hearts of young people to, you know, to, to draw them closer to not to the religion part of it, but draw them closer to the fact of them loving God more than anything else. And that's just one of the things um, that God has called me to do is to come to African University um, and to be here. Um, didn't have to pay anything. I still didn't pay anything while I was at Clapham University and not going to pay anything because the Lord has predestined me to be here, um, here at the Clapham University. Um, and got, when I got here, I've been loved from the beginning. Uh, people know who I were when I got here. You're that guy that wrote that book. You're that guy that motivates those young people to be successful. Yeah, so you're the one, you know, that um, anytime you speak, you always making us cry because you speak from the heart. And that's just one of the things that I always learned and I always love to do is because I realize that I had something inside of me that the world needs to hear. And so that's why I'm grateful that I can be here at Clapham University to be able to motivate the hearts of young people. Speechless. <laughs> I literally have goosebumps. Seriously, I'm speechless. I felt your passion coming through the computer screen right there. I really do. I feel your passion. And I'm telling you, that's a tweet tweet. When you said you can't be light in a light place, you have to be light in a dark place. And so many times we want to flee to the bigger areas, the Atlanta, the New Yorks, the uh, Californias, the LA, when sometimes you need to go into the dark places or the smaller places or the places that may not get you the fame and the fashion right. and the popularity, but that's where you're needed the most. And I, I so thank you for heeding that call on your life because a lot of times young people, not just young people now, because social media has everybody wanting to be a star, but right. <laughs> people want to go and get noticed and get seen and get likes and shares and comments. And so they go to these popular places, but here you are willing to go into a small place to do big things. I commend right. you, brother. I commend you. I appreciate you. it. I commend you. And again, this is another testament. <laughs> See, I, you know, I, I, I really believe that everything that we go through is preordained. Right. Like your story couldn't be so, it wouldn't be so sweet. It wouldn't be so delicious if you didn't have the learning disability. Right, right. You know That's what I'm true. saying? And, and it's like right. when we're in the valley, sometimes we look at the valley experience like, man, I, I hate this. It sucks. I could be so much further if I didn't have this. I didn't have that. You know, like for myself, if I didn't have the bankruptcies, if I didn't have the repossession, if right. I didn't get divorced. But I understand now that that dark place, that story is what makes the wins, the success, the testimonies that even more, even much more delicious. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. I'm really like blown away by the fact that you have a learning disability. You mastered that. You got two full rides to more, uh -huh. more house and to Claflin. Right. Now you've pinned two books. Tell me about your books, the, the name of your book and tell me a little bit about your book. Well, it's funny that you said, um, in the dark place, my first book, um, was called it's dark, but I can still see the light. Come on somebody. So. We can't make this up. <laughs> we can't make this up. <laughs> no, no. So this is it talks like I said, talk about learning disability because I think that people and you know, Sue Ham, I think people so much evolve and so much care about their issues mm -hmm. that they don't understand that what you're going through is not for you. Mm. It's to be able to encourage the hearts of people. And so I understood that even though I was in a dark place right now, I understand sooner or later. There's still going to be light there. Yeah. You know, sooner or later, I'm, I'm going to reach that thing. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to accomplish what I really want to accomplish because I understand that no matter what, um, that a dark time is going to be over soon. I remember my grandma always said, she's just saying, she's just saying, she's just saying, son, she's just saying, uh, light is coming very soon. If you just yes. hold on just a little lot longer, light's going to be there very soon. And yes. she used to always say that. And so for me to be able to, so I took that, what she told me, and I turned it into a book. I said, you know what? I'm going to write. My second, um, I'm, I'm going to write my first book and it's going to call it's dark, but I can still see the light. 
And when I first read that book, it began to make me cry, Suhan. I'm not going to lie to you because I began to say, I said, Lord, I said, how can we go into a dark place? Um, and, and we begin to be light. But if we begin to be light, then there's times that we're going to be there by ourselves. Right. And being in a dark time, not gonna be, you're not going to be with everybody else. And that's what I talked about in my book, talk about not only just learning this, but I talked about even being with friends and how you can deal with friends and how you know how you know how you could be successful um in being a young um a young virgin and then I mind you i'm 19 years old and i'm a virgin so i'm talking i talk because talk, i can talk about that because i've been through that i'm, I'm yes. still living in that thing um talking about that talking about how you know um with friends talking about how under uh, um, um your heart how you can control your heart um because you know that's part of being in a dark place because it's a lonely place it's an isolation place but it's also the best place to be in um when when god and when god be able to uh, develop you for who you to be um so my second book um after that um i talk about their destiny um your destiny um destiny is calling my name that is something Ooh. That I still get bumps on it because <laughs> destiny, Suham. I'm just I'm so excited about so because I mean if you I think if people understand what the word destiny really means, I think they will really get it. Tell each us, each and every one of us got a down. destiny. Break it down um, for us. <laughs> each of us got a destiny, um, and our destiny is very unique for each individual. Um, and well, David, why do you say that? I say that to say this is that each of our destiny have our name on it. And that's the reason why God has called me to write this book is because God given me 30 quotes that I've written throughout the time of my transitioning. And I have inspired and I encourage the hearts of young people, even when I was in seminar sessions, wherever I went, I've always jotted things down, even when it comes out of writing these quotes. Mm -hmm. And. And literally, I was just sitting at the table one day. And that's how I got the title. I was sitting at the table one day, and um, and you know, and and really, I just heard a voice, and it just said, you know, um, what's going on? I mean, why people don't have control of their destiny? Um, and one of the quotes um, that I um, that I always been inspired by one of my coach, and named Coach Mark. He said, "In this day, that life get better when you get better." And it was something that was very amazing to me um, because um, it talks about the fact of that, you know, we're our own control of our lives. We're on control of our destiny. And so that's the reason why I've written Destiny is Calling My Name, because I understood that, you know, that we're the only reason why we're not successful. We're the only reason why we're not great. We're the only reason why we're not where we're supposed to be. And and that's just one of the things that even when I learned from you, even Sue Ham, because I even just it was just amazing how, you know, we're so caught in to just trying to be successful. We're so caught in trying to reach the people that's already been successful. Uh, but we never understood. I never learned the process of them being successful. We never we never took the time out to be able to invest in what they're doing. One of the things that my coach always taught me, he's a multi-millionaire here in Atlanta, South Carolina, here in Atlanta, um, Atlanta, Georgia. And he always taught me. He never gave me anything. It always he always gave me resources to what he have done um, to be able to be successful. He could be able to go to wherever he want to go because he took the time out to read every day. He took the time out to be able to, uh, to you know to watch Les Brown and 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 watch this process of how he been successful. So the thing about the destiny is that we don't like to go through the process of the things. Ooh, We're so quick. Put my glasses up on that. <laughs> We're so quick. And, and 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 I say that because I'm saying that from a young point of view because the world has made everything so fast. Yes. But we don't take the time out to be able to understand what it really means to be successful. And so people always ask me to this day, Suham, they always say, man, you must be got money because you are Arthur. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm going to break that record. We don't have money. It takes a lot for us to be able to write these books. Yes. And, and, I, give, and I give every author a hand clap because you got to understand they're pulling out something in their heart. To be able to motivate the hearts of people, yes, and that's just one of the things um, that I look into and I and I pray about because I understand that my destiny means more than just what people think. Woo! My destiny is more than what my friends can talk about. My destiny means more than what I'm going through right now because I understand that my destiny is the way I want to be in the future in my life. I want to be able to live lavishly and I want to be able to have my own cars and my own houses and I can be able to pay for them. And, and I begin to understand something and I'm going to be quiet right here. Um, what I begin <laughs> to understand this is that um, the reason why NFL players and the reason why, um, you know, um, basketball players and the reason why they're making all this money when they get to a certain point is because nobody never taught them how to manage their money. It's good for right then and there. 
Well, what do you do when you have no money at all? Mm. And that's the reason why I'm so that's the reason why I'm so passionate about what I do is because guess what? Suhan, I started with nothing. Right. I started with zero dollars. Right. And I took zero dollars and made what I want to be successful. It took it took zero dollars for me to write two books. It took zero. It it just it just took zero dollars, and so you can have nothing and still be successful. So that's just what I had to say about that. Thank you so much because so many people, um, you know, they come with the excuses that they cannot get started because they lack the appropriate resources. And at the end of the day, man, you can get started. As E.T. the hip hop preacher said, "How bad do you want it? Do you want it as bad as you want to breathe?" And breathe. Right. Right. And when you want it like that, you won't quit. You will keep going and you will fulfill the dream. You will live your destiny. So tell me about um, passion. What does keeping passion alive mean to you? Um, that's I'm not that it's actually on my logo. It talks about um, keeping your passion alive because I, you know, when people, when they hear me talk, they always say, you got so much passion. You, you got do. so much passion. When you, talk. You, you know, you talk so much with passion. Um, because when you've been through enough hell, Suham, <laughs> when, you, when you've been through enough. <laughs> I almost spit my coffee out. I know. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> All you can do is have passion. Preach. Because, you know, keeping passion alive. And that's just something that, um, that God has really predestined me to be able to do. Um, because I realized um, that my destiny. Um, means more than what I can only imagine. And so I understood that I'm the only reason why I'm not great. And so when I understand that my passion um, is something I sleep and breathe every day, I wake up in the morning and want to do, and I just I just have to do it. Um, so that's just something that I understood that my passion, my passion, I, I, I constantly say that because each and every one of us um, have a passion that we that we, that we love so much. Mm. Um, you know, uh, one thing about me and you, we know we love to motivate people. We yes. love to see people be successful. So that's our passion. We're passionate about that. Um, I get so passionate about it, you know, that I start I start feeling goosebumps all over me uh, <laughs> because I love what I do. I'm not just a motivational speaker, but I'm passionate about what I do. Yes. I'm passionate about speaking and encouraging the hearts of young people. I'm passionate about being great. I'm just passionate about it. I'm about to <laughs> preach. Wow. I'm passionate about it. So that's just something that I understand that we have to keep our passion alive. And always understand that we have to get up every morning with a smile on our face. Because even though you're Arthur, even though you whatever you are, even though that you may go to a job that you may not be liking, but you gotta understand that you gotta keep your passion alive because sooner or later, sooner or later, yes. joy shall come into the morning. Trouble don't last always. Yes. So that's why you have to keep your passion alive. Because guess what? One day you're gonna see the promised land. Like Martin Luther King said, that we're gonna see the promised land one of these old days. And so sooner I'm grateful that we can later. be able to see the promised land. <laughs> yes, yeah, sooner or later, it's going to get greater. It's going to rule in your favor. Um, I was just thinking about that gospel song. So tell us real quick about your third book that's coming out. Well, actually, um, it's actually a joined book, um, a joined book um, with me and one of we and my brother. We're actually writing a book together. Um, and it's just mighty funny to me because um, we never thought we'd write a book together. And I remind you, he's another guy with no disability. Mm. He had the same exact disability that I had. Wow. Um, but he took a took for a different turn than I took. So we're going to necessarily write a book to be able to encourage the hearts of young people our age um, and just talk about um, some of the um, the things that uh, we as young people going through. And the book title, um, so I didn't release it yet, but the book title um, for this particular show, because since I love Suham, yeah. I'm going to release the I was going to say, we, woo, um, we get the exclusive, <laughs> baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the book title, which is called Ugly is Good. Oh, it's called that's Ugly. dope. It's good. Um, and Ugly is good. I don't want to begin to talk about it because I talk about it. All right, we won't talk about it. Preaching. We won't talk about so it. So I just, I just want you to be on the lookout um, for Ugly is Good. Um, let, me, uh, let me say this. We look at ugly for being bad. But ugly is the thing that makes us who we are. Each and every one of us has something that we're not good at mm-hmm. something that we're just not perfect at that we're just not great at but we have to take that thing that we think is ugly and Ooh. turn it into good that's all i'm gonna say i'm gonna Ooh. leave it like that oh ugly is good i love that that's a dope ti- how, okay i gotta ask how did y'all come up with that title i mean i know <laughs> well, you kind of uh, like just told me right then because you're taking something ugly and making it good but i mean it's just a play on words how did y'all like decide on that 
Because, like I said, people think being have a disability is an ugly thing. It's something they're ashamed from. They, mm-hmm. they shine it from. They, they, they don't want to be in the forefront for it. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing that makes each, every one of us different. Yes. And so we that's that's the ugly thing about it. The good thing about it, make it good about it, is that we have a testimony. Mm. And what we got to say is for the world to hear. So that's just one of the things that we understand that ugly is good. So stop <laughs> hiding your ugly. Basically, right? right? Listen, right. everybody that's watching this, stop hiding your ugly. Show how you made it through and how your ugly is good because that ugly is going to help somebody else to get to their good. Oh, I right. love that. I love that. Listen, right. David, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. But before I let you go, right, there's two things I'm going to need. I'm going to need you to tell people how they can find you, how they can get your books. And then I want you to, for somebody who may be suffering from a learning disability or somebody who just may be depressed right now, feel like they can't make it. I want you to give them uh, a few minutes of motivation to uh, inspire them to live their dreams. Well, listen, everybody, um, let me say how you can get your book. You can get my um, both of my books on Amazon. You can type in um, my name, which is David E. Lucas, that's spelled D-A- D-A-V-I-D, um, E um, dot, then it's Lucas, L-U-C-A-S. Um, you can just type it in. You can also Google it. Um, type in my first book cover, um, which is called uh, It's Dark, but I can still see the light. Or you can type in my second book cover, which is called Destiny is Calling My Name. Search it. I promise you, you'll find it. Um, also, um, you can also look at my website at www.handfulctw.org. Again, that is www.handfulctw.org. Um, let me just let me just give you a moment of encouragement. Listen, uh, these are things that we're all struggling with. We're all struggling with issues, all struggling with problems. We're all struggling with things that we're not, um, you know, that we, that we don't want to go through. Um, but at the same time, it is the worth um, of it that makes it better. Listen, I said it's the worth of it yes. that mm-hmm. makes it better. We don't like to go through anything. We don't like the hard things. We don't like the hard part of anything. We don't want to go through nothing. We just want to wake up in the morning, get rich, and we go on by that day. But I promise you, if you understand the process of things, you appreciate it more. And so when you get that thing inside of your spirit, man, that you love to do being and that you love to do and that you love to be successful, go out there and do it. Because guess what? Somebody waiting to hear your voice. Somebody is waiting to be able to hear what you have to say. Awesome sauce. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate you for stopping by the Sue Ham show to give you a testimony, man, to tell us how you went through the adversities and you turned your ugly into good. Oh, I just dropped that. I just plugged your new book coming out. <laughs> so listen up, everybody. Y'all make sure y'all connect with David. David E. Lucas, go on Amazon, pick up his books. He's also a motivational speaker and a minister. So book him, book him, book him, book him, book him. Hey, we are out of time. Thank y'all for tuning in. You know, in closing, I got to encourage you to to live, love, learn, and laugh, to not quit, but to follow your dreams to success. And listen, go around suham.com and check out what we got going on. New stage plays, new engagements. Check us out. Thanks again, David. Everybody, we out ya. Thank you. Peace.